All right, so the cerebellum. So the well, we could just talk about this book first of all. So this book, it was a, you know, it was a pretty scholarly read. There was a lot of of words I didn't know, and I mean a lot. Well, no, I can't say words a lot of. You know, like, man, I'm forgetting what they're called, but just a lot of technical terms. I should say. There was a lot of technical terms in this book. So it was a it was a technical read. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't understand all of it. <laughs> and I would have loved to. Because, you know, all it is is just me learning more about the brain. But the cerebellum. Now, you can see right here around to the around to the part where it's at. It's the, you know, purple part. So the cerebellum is behind the brain stem. And its main functions... <laughs> We're just going to go in chronological order with what they stated in the book. The main functions of the cerebellum is, one, kind of spatio, spatio-temporal. I'm not sure if temporal is the right word <laughs> at that part, but spatio. You know, it, it has to do with you in space. Because the animals with, with lesions in their cerebellum, they had trouble, you know, walking straight. Their their spatial system it was like they didn't have a balance inside of them. So, aside from, you know, not having balance, there's also it's also associated with reflexes, and it's it's the cerebellum kind of does everything, <laughs> just like all the other brain systems. It it just does a little bit of everything. So other than you know the spatial temporal, as I said, it's associated with reflexes, <laughs> both ocular. Which means with the eyes and muscular, which obviously has to do with muscles. So when you're like doing reflexes or having reflexes <laughs> or using your reflexes, <laughs> you you know your cerebellum is activated. There now you now you know. And aside from aside from <laughs> aside from that, your cerebellum is also is also used during they said a hot. You know, when it's extremely, extremely hot temperatures, it's very active. And what they said was when someone's in a fire, like they were simulating someone's in a fire and their brain was like extremely, the cerebellum was like extremely active. So I don't know what that has to do. Maybe because there's a lot of reflexes going on. <laughs> you know, if, if you're pretty much on fire, then I'm pretty sure you're just, just acting out on anything. So maybe that's why. And also the cerebellum is associated with with just synaptic what is it? Synaptic plasticity. And the cerebellum is also where you learn fear conditioning. And I don't know if I talked about this, but basically it's where like you get scared off of something that your ancestors have experienced. And this was seen in rats. So you know, it probably has worked for humans too. But that happens in the cerebellum too. So, you, you know, a lot happens in the cerebellum. But a lot happens throughout the whole brain, basically. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to learn about this stuff. I, I really enjoy reading these, these neural books. Because it just, it puts it into perspective of like, I'm just my brain. <laughs> like right now, I'm just my brain speaking. You know, my brain is probably highly active right now off of me remembering. All this stuff and having the images of of this stuff in my head, so it's pretty cool to to learn about this stuff. And this kind of was just like a short introduction on the cerebellum, cause you know, as I said, I don't I don't know all the technical terms. They talked about a lot of phosphates, you know, some proteins. Well, they did talk about you know some stuff I knew like GABA, IGF one, BDNF, but there was a lot of other stuff I didn't know. So yeah, this was just a short introduction. Maybe if I read more books, you know, precisely on the cerebellum, then we can get into the more deeper topics of exactly what the neuronal pathways do. But until then, this was the cerebellum.